changed. What's going on everyone? Great Talon here and today the prey is going to be my Gears of War 4 review. Ah yes, just in time for the latest installment, I hope when this uh, video is premiering. <laughs> we revisit an underrated chapter in the Gears saga in my opinion that I may be in the minority about in regards to my feelings on this game, but nevertheless it possesses all the tricks and trimmings uh, most, if not all, Gears of War games have and that is its blockbuster style action with some over the top acting at times. In this cover based shooter we will see if it lived up to the hype of its predecessors or if it's another way to beat a dying horse. Join me once again as I gather the Lancer with chainsaw attachment and uh, trusty uh, cog-like gear and carve my, my way through my in-depth review of Gears of War 4. Reviewed on the Xbox One X. First off is, up is uh, graphics performance and controls. So first off I must say, for this game releasing back in the fall of 2016, it featured full HDR support and now at the main menu when you boot up the, on the, the Xbox One, uh, it'll say Xbox One X Enhanced if you play it on an Xbox One X console like I was um, and it still is the best damn looking game to Xbox One this date, uh, to date and I, I, I just want to say, I mean I haven't played Gear, Gears 5 yet um, or I might have by the time this is launched, but I will be doing an in-depth analysis review of Gears 5 as well. But I just want to say that the use of the Unreal Forge 4 engine here is prominent as well, and it's utilized to its fullest potential, and the payout here is quite mind-boggling at times. The shadow and lighting mechanics they use with this game engine makes images appear super realistic and paint a beautiful portrait wherever the game takes you. At several sections in the game, for example, you'll have to deal with wind and lightning and storm surges, and I mean, just damn near awe-inspiring to witness and, and take in and gander at. It's just beautiful, beautifully animated, beautifully rendered. As you gander at the, at the, the stunning special effects, and, and honestly, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's gorgeous to look at, but at the same token, when, when you do, you know, take a gander at the ruby, as the ruby red lightning streaks pummel toward you, for example, seeking to eviscerate you and turn you into an extra crispy piece of bacon, uh, I mean, it's just, you still want to stop and look at it, no matter how much it's going to fucking kill you. It's, it's amazing. That's what this game does to you. And, ca and countless times I've found myself um, just stopping dead in my tracks, observing these special effects, and in turn dying as I was supposed to be dodging the pretty crimson red lightning particles, not staring at them like a deer caught in the headlights. And if you have a 4K TV that supports HDR, you'll really be in for a treat as next to, uh, honestly, next to Horizon Zero Dawn and God of War, I want to say Gears 4 is the best looking game in HDR that you'll ever experience, hands down uh, to the ground. Colors are as vivid as you would see them ever. Um, deep, rich, and lush, looking so damn realistic at times you may find yourself reaching out, to, uh, reaching your hand out to the, pet your TV screen like it's a puppy. <laughs> the game's revolution, revol resolution is seemingly uh, 4K native ad adaptive output, meaning it is probably one of the only games around uh, to date even running in a native 4K resolution, but only at 30 frames per second in single player mode on the Xbox One X, while it maintains 60 frames per second in multiplayer mode. Uh, I guess because you need faster, better frame rate and, and competitive multiplayer. Um, some occasional texture pop-ins when loading or reloading checkpoints are noticeable, but in no way hinder the robust performance it Gears 4 entails here. In regards to the control system, it may seem a bit foreign to some newcomers who are not used to the cover-based third-person shooters do, but once you run through a couple of chapters, you'll get the hang of utilizing uh, cover and running, turning, aiming, and so on. It'll become second nature, as the overall control hierarchy has not changed much since the initial Gears launched way back in 2006. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I always say. Okay, next up, gameplay and a bit about the story. So, Gears of War 4 is a third-person cover-based shooting game. Um, that What that means is you take control of a soldier in a third-person like perspective and move him or her around, front and back, and, uh, and strafing side to side with the left joystick, whereas the right joystick is reserved for aiming and the camera around in which direction you either want to go in or aiming your weapons uh, down the sights and so on and so forth. Uh, in single-player mode, you can choose to play as either JD, a character named JD, 
um, in in single player. And if you're playing co-op, you can, as a guest, you can join uh, to, like joining someone's game. You can opt to play as either the girl named Kate or the or the token black dude. I like to call Dale. Uh, all of which don the armor, a heavy armor enough to withstand full penetration of the flaming inferno temperature of Mercury, while looking like you're throwing on a freaking armor that can be uh, like used for an armored tank. Um, uh, the weapons you get to choose from uh, this time, this installment to inviscerate the Locust Horde this time around are around are quite vast, and they um, they pretty much take the best weapons from the past Gears of War titles and place them into Gears Four uh, to use as to your liking. You get the classic Lancer with chainsaw attachment, perfect for slowing down enemies, inching closer to a pull off that ever sweet, so de delectable chainsaw execution, completely ripping your foe into two like a nice thick slice of Easter ham. There's also the shotgun, which is perfect for crowd control and turning the locust horde into pieces of uh, locust chop meat. Uh, other weapons range from simple 9mm like pistols to magnum pistols like the bolt talk, battle rifles like the uh, the MLRT or the MTR, I forget what it's called, a uh, pack of punch as well, and the heavy set weapons which includes the long shot sniper rifle, boom shot, grenade launcher, and my personal favorite, the torque bow, which is pretty much a crossbow and an explosive like tip that if it lands a shot on the enemy, it'll explode with them like an M80 fry firecracker on the 4th of July. Uh, then there's a few new weapons if you like to tinker with, like the drop shot, which is like an, ex an underground explosive mine launcher, and the saw blade, which shoots out saw blades and isn't too isn't too bad, but uh, you know, also good for clearing out congregations of locust scum. How the game is broken down is uh, it's within five acts and is about four to six chapters within each act. Checkpoints are frequently uh, placed to. And usually time just right after you finish a firefight, which is pretty nice and uh, and well uh, well done. Uh, and the game is quite rhythm, 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 uh, rhythmic. Uh, I can I cannot talk today, folks. I apologize. Rhythmatic, I want to say, meaning uh, ritualistically speaking, you'll move from one firefight to the next, each more over the top than the last. And some sections, which are very cinematic and uncharted, like even feeling is as uh, as well as you're like, for example, you're shooting down, uh, hanging from a wire. Uh, on a falling elevator shaft or on the back of a motorbike vehicle trying to take down a dropship with a fucking machine gun. It's ridiculous. It's batshit crazy for the most part and reminiscent to most of the insane Michael Bay style movie Hollywood movies you can imagine. The story takes place approximately 25 years after the events of Gears of War 3 and you take on the role of J.D. Phoenix, the son of legendary cog soldier Marcus Phoenix, who also appears in the game as well. Along with newcomers such as the girl named Kate and uh, and Dell as well, uh, J.D.'s buddy, as they struggle to survive the oncoming uprising uh, lo swarm locusts, they're called, which have been mysteriously hatching from crystal-like pods. By the end of the game, it's quite cool, too, that they have a nice little twist on the story that ends up on another cliffhanger, which I hope will Gears of War 5 will answer some of the questions Gears 4 put into place. But overall, it's a wild ride from start to finish. The final chapter of the final act is comparable to the movie Pacific Rim, and I'll, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so, moving on. You're looking magnetic. Enough foolishness. You're coming with us. Those are new, and they're armed. They are. And here's what's interesting. Unlike you two, they actually follow orders. What is this? You looking for a repeat of Settlement 2? A highly successful operation. It's now our most compliant settlement. Look, our village hasn't had power in weeks. We need this fabricator. I don't care about the goddamn fabricator. You're taking my people. What? Don't forget, I know what you were trained to do. So in regards to the sound music and voice, the sound effects right off the bat are brilliant in a sense that the shooting and landing of shots and explosions are body parts breaking off and sound deliberate as hell and you can just visualize the poor fools on the receiving end of that sniper rifle or shotgun blast of the cranium are going what they're going through quite vividly if I do say so myself. The music is a bit theatrical at times but in no way comes close to achieving the amount of dramatic effect the first two or three Gears of War games uh, gave in regards to a dramatic thriller like feel. The voice acting um, what you, is what you would expect from a, a star-studded cast like including Liam McIntyre who played Spartacus in the uh, Star series, uh, uh, one of my personal favorite shows and, you should, and who you should all check out because it's amazing, as well as John DiMaggio returning as, as to voice Solid Snake, I mean, excuse me, Marcus Phoenix, uh, 
Uh, he does a, sound, a bit sound a bit on the gritty side, like David Hayter would when he turned 60, and uh, he's just fed up with all kinds of life on different levels and just wants to finish his sentence with Metal Gear. Uh, but I digress. The voice acting is pretty good overall, but a bit cheesy at times with their one-liners. And I must say, it just keeps bringing me back to those those big-budget Hollywood Michael Bay flicks, uh, where he tries to pad the over-the-top acting with even more over-the-top explosions. Now we get to the replay value. So I'm going with high here, folks. The one thing I always loved about the Gears of War games and series is their tremendously high replay value. Even with the campaign being as short as between 8 and 10 hours, you can always fire it up again to play with a buddy, to replay and live it and relive some of the awesome scenes in co-op, or take the fight online in either horde mode, which uh, is you and a team of other three or four other players taking on countless waves of locust enemies, or PvP mode, which features five-on-five -five enemy um, 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 you can do Team Deathmatch, King of the Hill, um, a whole bunch of different modes online, um, etc. Now, that being said, the overall score, score is it worth your time? I'm going to go with a 9 out of 10. Yes, uh, as over the top and downright cheesy at times Gears of War has become over the years, I cannot deny it is not only an amazing looking game uh, aesthetically, but one of the, and one of the best best graphically uh, achieved games on the Xbox One X console, with one of the few games out there with a native 4K resolution in this day and age, but also a fun popcorn blockbuster-like game that you can jump in and jump out of at any given time to no avail and still find yourself coming back months to years down the line for more of the same old insane action. And yes, Gears of War definitely is worth your time. So with that being said, that's my review of Gears of War 4. And um, I'm going to go, at the time of this video is being made, I'm going to go pre-install Gears of War 5 on my Xbox. <laughs> because I can't wait to get into that game. I heard some really great things, good things about it. But that being said, thanks for stopping by. Uh, as always, I appreciate your time and support. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for stopping by.